How do you pick a realtor? If you're going to sell your house, what questions should you be asking? What's important when you hire a realtor before selling a house? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about today. Stick around. Hi, I'm Annie Baker. I'm a realtor here in the Bay Area of California, and I specialize in listing houses for sale. So today I'm going to talk about five things I think you should talk about with any prospective realtor uh, before hiring them. If you want to make sure you're working with someone that's really going to get a bat for you and is qualified to do so. And I also have some tips about how to prepare your house for sale. So stick around to the end and I'll talk about how to access those tips. But today I'm going to give you five things to consider, five questions to ask and scenarios to consider before picking your realtor because sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And I'm here to tell you there are some awesome realtors out there. Yes, I'm one of them. There's some great realtors and honestly, there are some awful realtors. Anyway, let's get to it. Number one, one question you should ask is, do they work in your area very often? So there are some realtors that really specialize in a really small geographic area. Here where I am in Bay Area, the Bay Area, I know some realtors that specialize in like two or three neighborhoods neighborhoods within Los Gatos. They rarely go outside of that. That's unusual. Most people specialize in like all of Silicon Valley. So I'm not saying an agent, a good agent that does a lot of listings in Mountain View, he or she could be a great realtor for you even if your house is in South San Jose. If they really know their stuff, they can look at stats, they can call other realtors that specialize in that area. They can do a lot of background information to be good at your neighborhood too but you don't want to pick someone that specializes in San Francisco. You know, your a coworker's cousin is a top realtor up in San Francisco and this person is telling you you have to use them and you live, you know, in Sunnyvale. I don't know that that's the best choice. That's a pretty big swing, pretty big difference. Or I've even heard of people working in Sacramento, but it's their cousin's friend and they want them to sell a house in San Jose. I don't buy it. I don't think they're going to do that great of a job, but I don't recommend it. So make sure they work in your area. Number two question I would ask, do they work with more buyers or sellers? I am one of those agents that thinks it's better to specialize in one or the other. They are two different animals. I'm not saying I can do a fantastic job for buyers because I think I, I know I do, but the majority of my business is with sellers. But I always do work with a few buyers every year because I want to hear what's important to buyers. I want to walk in with buyers to other houses and, and always kind of have, keep my finger on the pulse of what buyers want. But at the same time, I have other friends that really specialize in working with buyers and I'll call them, hey, what are you hearing right now? So as a good listing agent, you'll do the research from buyers agents. But if a person is majority of their business is buyers, I think it can be a harder transition to do listings. Depending on if you're interviewing a realtor that says, oh, 80% of my business is with buyers, how connected are they to being able to really price your house right, present it right, do the right projects before listing? Are they really gonna be top notch for that job? It's up to you, but I tend to say, at least find some that's least about 50-50, or preferably someone like me that predominantly does listings it can make a difference in the money you make. The third thing I would consider is how many transactions have they done in the last year? Now I might be a little bit different than some other realtors advice, but I am not a huge fan of the mega agent that talks about, I do a hundred you know, deals a year or 50 deals a year. It is not possible to do a great job if you're doing that many deals by yourself. You have to have a team of agents in place which then means, are you really working with that realtor the whole time? Or are they just schmoozing you at the beginning to get the listing and then passing you off to another agent, probably not as experienced as they are, then that's the person you're really dealing with the rest. But, oh, you hired the brand name, the person that has the billboards all over and says they're the number one realtor in that part of the town, and you really don't get them, you get somebody else. You also don't necessarily want someone that says, well, you know, I did just two transactions last year, but that's why, you know, I'll devote all my time to you. I prefer actually sometimes the agent that does fewer deals because they will devote more time to you. But the question to ask if they do only a couple deals a year, ask if they have a good mentor. 
because if, when I was getting started in the business, I mean, I hadn't done any sales and someone took a chance on me and I got to list their house. But I had a great mentor in my office who basically held my hand the whole time. And she was a great resource for me. So I came a lot stronger than just, oh, this is my first listing. I think I know what I'm doing. So find out, you know, and you'll get a feel. You want the agent to be honest with you. So if they're gonna be honest and say, I only did two deals, but I have some a mentor in the office who's fantastic and is there for me the whole time, I actually would prefer that agent than the mega agent who's gonna kind of pass you off to someone on their team. And you are just gonna be a cog in their wheel and it's a numbers game and deals in, deals out. I don't know if you're getting the personal attention that this kind of huge financial decision deserves. You are not a transaction. You are a homeowner that is selling a house with probably your largest financial asset. You want someone that's gonna be there for you. Fourth thing I would ask is, do they double end transactions? What double ending means is, will they represent you as the seller, but if a buyer walks into an open house, will they also want to represent that buyer to write an offer for your house? So a lot of times agents will make that really appealing to you because they'll say, well, if I rep represent both sides, I'll lower my commission. But here's the deal. If you were getting divorced, would you want to share a divorce attorney with your ex when you're in court? I don't know how that attorney would do. They wouldn't know whose back they had. I feel pretty strongly about that in real estate. And there are a lot of realtors that love to double end. That is their goal. They will do every open house to try and get the buyer and they want to double end. Personally, I think it's an integrity issue. I don't do it. And I think it's in your best interest to have a realtor that doesn't do it as well, that you want them to have your back. A caveat here, I have done it, the, I think, you know, less than five times in my career, only when an, an investor is buying the house. Typically, it's a house that needs a lot of work. Um, I will reduce the commission, so it's more money in my seller's pocket, but I'm very clear with the investor. I'm not representing you from a fiduciary standpoint. I'm facilitating paperwork. I'm providing as much information and disclosure available, but I will point out things that might not be in, you know, the best option for you. But in investors, it's a numbers game to them. It's not emotional. So they know they don't need me to have some huge fiduciary responsibility to them other than to represent them fairly. So that's the only time I really do it. Um, but I will always pass any buyer lead. If I get a call because it's my listing and buyers interested, I will refer to another agent. And I definitely get buyers that get mad and they're like, why won't you represent me too? But it's not in the seller's best interest. So I highly encourage you to make sure your realtor will not be double ending. So number five, last thing, ask how your the agent feels about negotiating. So it's very common to get multiple offers in our neck of the woods in the Bay Area. So ask them, if we get multiple offers, do you recommend taking the highest offer? And just see what they say. Uh, if they just automatically say, oh, for sure, why wouldn't you? To me, that's an agent that probably is shying away from negotiating. There are a lot of different tactics you can use to get multiple offer bidders up even higher. You also have to be careful about terms. What if one offer is so much higher than the rest and it's a cash offer? You might think, oh, what a no brainer. But what if that buyer has a contingency to sell their house? So they're bringing all the proceeds from the sale of their house to pay cash for yours. But what if their house just went on the market? It's not even in contract yet. That's a term that you have to be careful about just thinking that it's a great offer. But there are other things, negotiating if there are any repairs that need to be done in the house. Um, you know, if a buyer's asking for the seller to do any of the repairs. So find out how comfortable they are at that part. That's honestly one of my favorite parts, but not all agents feel like that. They get very uncomfortable with negotiating. So I hope those tips helped. Not all realtors are created equal, but you also just want to get a good feeling about the, the person you choose to work with because you will be talking to them a lot and you want to feel good that they know what they're talking about. So at the beginning, I talked about some tips about what to do to get your house ready for sale. So if you go down to the description, I have a link and I have some information you can download for free. My goal is always get you the most money in your pocket when you sell. So thanks for being here and until next time, have a good one.